Any dog can bite, but there are breeds that are more likely to do this, and this does not at all depend on the size and menacingness of the dog, and as a rule, the smaller the dog, the more aggressive and hysterical it is, this is explained quite logically, small dogs try to show with their behavior that they are formidable and scary and it is better not to mess with them, they try to protect themselves with aggressive behavior, while large and strong breeds feel their strength, they are more balanced and understand that in case of a threat they will be able to stand up for themselves and for the owner, so they prefer not to waste their time on a useless bark used by small breeds. Today we will look at the smallest vicious dog breeds that can bite for no reason. Jack Russell Terrier Small breeds make up for their small size by being aggressive. The Jack Russell Terrier is first and foremost a terrier and that says it all, terriers generally do not tolerate rough treatment and will desperately resist. Therefore, keep an eye on children who may play rather roughly with their four-legged friend. The main cause of behavioral problems in Russells is a lack of physical and mental activity. They need constant work or play to keep their body and mind occupied. Ignoring this rule may result in your pet becoming an unpredictable animal whose pent-up energy will one day explode into destructive behavior. All difficulties, of course, can be corrected or even prevented from occurring through proper education and training. Owners of small dogs often ignore dominance issues, believing that their little terrier is just being naughty when he growls at children or those who sit next to him on the sofa. It must be remembered that it is small dogs that can bite small children on the face. Owners of large dogs still make some attempts to control the aggressiveness of their dogs. Therefore, in order to manage an aggressive state, you need to understand that a dog is first and foremost a pack animal. The nature of pack animals requires that there is a strict order of subordination in the pack, and if a hierarchical structure is not offered, it is absent in their pack, they take its establishment into their own hands, that is, paws and teeth. If the owner does not become the leader of the pack for the dog, then the dog takes over the leadership. And dogs can only obey those who lead them, which is why many dogs follow the owner's commands and do not obey his wife, or vice versa. All this is said to mean that a dog treats a person as one of his own kind. Dachshund. According to a recent study, this small burrowing dog has been voted the most aggressive breed in the world. And despite the fact that a dachshund cannot seriously harm a person, no matter how hard it bites, this little monster is known for its hatred of strangers. As it turned out, one out of five dachshunds bit a stranger at least once in their life, and one out of twelve attacked their own owner. This dog breed has a long history, dogs are depicted on ancient Egyptian papyri. The breed descended from hounds, the stunted hound is considered a distant ancestor. The dogs were given a remarkable ability to pursue prey, excellent sense of smell and intelligence. The dachshund is primarily a hunting dog, bred to work in dens to catch beaver, otter, or badger. Among small hunting breeds, this is the smallest, most courageous, and confident dog. But it is not uncommon for representatives of this breed to have their hunting instinct dulled over many decades of living in apartments and the dachshund becomes an ideal family pet with an easygoing and calm character. It is believed that dachshunds have the most expressive eyes, in which one can simultaneously see great curiosity and a desire to understand the world around them. This is a very proud dog with a subtle mind, which has its own opinion on everything, and will not rush to mindlessly carry out any command if it considers it stupid. From all that has been said, we can conclude that everything depends on the socialization of this breed and the attitude towards it. One owner may have an angry dog, trained to hunt for prey, ready to bite any passerby, and another owner may have a dog of the same breed who is a kind family pet. Taste of Prey Papillon this decorative stylish dog actually bites very hard. Papillons are especially aggressive towards children because they get irritated very quickly and will not tolerate any kind of bullying. In addition, papillons are possessive and actively protect their owners, which can lead to attacks on strangers. According to the breeders of this breed, the aggression of papillons, who easily become angry, is not a defect of the breed, but is a consequence of poor upbringing. Despite their small size, Papillons are very unfriendly with other dogs. 
They can live in a pack, but prefer the company of two or three dogs. They try to dominate other dogs even if they are much larger. Most representatives of this breed will try to assert their superiority when meeting another dog by adopting threatening postures and barking. Moreover, if the challenge is accepted, they do not retreat even if the enemy is much larger than them. This is a problem, since most opponents can easily kill a dog, even if not on purpose. Although these are not terriers, they can get into serious trouble. Surprisingly, they don't get along with other animals either. These dogs have retained much more hunting instincts than other decorative breeds. They love to chase everyone and are capable of killing lizards and mice. Most dogs get used to cats and live quietly in their company. However, they may periodically bother them when trying to play. Most behavior problems in papillons are the result of small dog syndrome, which occurs in dogs whose owners behave differently than they would with a large dog. They do not correct incorrect behavior for a variety of reasons, most of which are perceptual. They find it funny when a one kilogram dog growls and bites, which is why most break off the leash and rush at other dogs, while very few, for example, bull terriers, do the same, since serious dangerous dogs are treated seriously in education. The Yacht Terrier is a German hunting terrier, a breed bred in the 30s of the 20th century specifically for hunting. The small size of these dogs should not mislead others about their friendliness and easygoing nature. Yacht Terriers can rightfully lead the top of the most evil small dogs. They are absolutely fearless and resilient, and treat any stranger with extreme caution. Representatives of this breed will protect their owner even at the cost of their own lives. You can try to reduce their aggressiveness through early socialization and persistent and firm training. When crossing different breeds of dogs, dog handlers did not pay much attention to the dog's appearance. The main goal was to create a real hunter who would not be afraid to go hunting in rain, snow, or heat. Like all hunting dogs, Yacht Terriers have a very complex, stubborn, domineering character. This is a very active dog who is not used to just sitting still, he needs to constantly move, run somewhere, do something. This breed is completely unsuitable for people who lead a passive lifestyle. The dog cannot just sit at home all day and sleep on the sofa, in this case he will turn the whole apartment upside down in order to throw out at least part of his energy, which often turns into aggression in relation to all surrounding people and animals. Spaniels they are one of the most beloved family pets. They protect their owners well. But nevertheless, Cocker Spaniels made it to the top of the most evil small breeds thanks to a genetic disease. Some dogs of this breed are prone to rage syndromes. This disease is very dangerous and leads to sudden attacks by dogs on their owners. If a Spaniel develops this disease, then the only option, unfortunately, is to euthanize the animal. This problem occurs in Spaniels, particularly Cocker Spaniels and Springer Spaniels. Uncontrollable rage syndrome occurs relatively rarely in Spaniels, and aggressive behavior of dogs most often consists of improper upbringing by their owners, especially for male Cocker Spaniels and Springer Spaniels. Males of uniform color are prone to attack not only other animals, strangers, but even their own owners. It is almost impossible to correct this rage if it is clinical in nature rather than behavioral. A group of Spanish veterinarians from the University of Barcelona, in a study of dog aggression cases that occurred in Spain from 1998 to 2007, named the most aggressive breeds. And it is not surprising that English Cocker Spaniels are recognized as the most aggressive dogs. Scientists analyzed 1,040 cases of dog aggression reported by their owners. It turned out that the English Cocker Spaniel attacked people more often than others, both its own owners and strangers. At the same time, other breeds tended to show aggression towards other dogs. Uncontrollable rage syndrome is a condition with which a spaniel can live for a long time without showing signs of nervous disorders until a seizure occurs. A dog suffering from rage syndrome behaves very intrusively, viciously guards toys and food, can attack a person or another creature for no reason, and suddenly bite the owner, jumping up after sleep. It has been observed that most often affected spaniels bite people with whom they live in the same house. A spaniel can hide under furniture and then attack members of the household from there. Its mood changes abruptly, it growls or barks. The rage increases at the sight of other dogs, the spaniel's eyes become glassy, and all attempts by those around him to stop him are unsuccessful. During a seizure, the dog does not realize what it is doing, 
and very often after the syndrome manifests itself, it behaves normally, as if it had not rushed at people. In addition, Spanish veterinarians discovered another pattern, among all English cocker spaniels, the most aggressive were red males. The researchers found that this color separation occurs because the level of melanin production, which determines coat color, corresponds to the level of dopamine production, as well as other chemical compounds that affect the aggressiveness of dogs. Another research group compared male and female English cocker spaniels of red, black and mixed colors. In the course of their research, they confirmed this hypothesis, but added that in more than 40% of cases, the culprits of the incidents are the owners who are not able to instill sufficient obedience in the animals. By the way, Swedish scientists previously came to the conclusion that purebred dogs become dumber and dumber with each generation. The Chihuahua is another breed that hardly anyone can take seriously. When it comes to aggression, few dogs can beat the Chihuahua. It is believed that the Chihuahua is the second most evil dog, after the Dachshund. The likelihood that this particular dog will attack a person is higher than that he will be bitten by a Doberman Pinscher or Pit Bull. But still, one should not categorically classify all representatives of this breed as feisty, all domestic animals, like people have their differences both in appearance and in temperament. Some animals have an aggressive nature, while others are calm about everything. Many animals even feel jealous of their owner if he spends time with someone else. Chihuahuas have their own character, unique only to this breed of dog. By the way, there is an opinion that this breed is characterized by canine Napoleon syndrome, that is, the dog is aware of its worthless parameters and small teeth that it can break even on a hamster, Therefore it becomes complex and shows causeless aggression at any careless gesture in its direction, immediately showing that it is better not to touch it. But if the offender ignores the threats of this little dog, not taking her seriously, then she is ready to rush into battle. Fearlessness is another characteristic temperament trait of this breed. A small chihuahua will rush at a dog ten times its size, but, unfortunately, for a chihuahua this often ends tragically so when walking you should keep it on a short leash so that it does not start a hysterical fight with the dog who looked at her askance. The official version of the origin of the Chihuahua is associated with Mexico, where the mysterious Toltec people appeared in the Middle Ages. Wealthy Indians and priests of this tribe kept short dogs with long hair as pets. Unique dogs were considered sacred, so for the time being they participated in all religious rites and holidays. But after the death of the owner, they were mercilessly sacrificed and mummified. It was assumed that the dog takes away the sins of the deceased, protects his soul from punishment and protects him on the way to his final refuge. Archaeologists have more than once found mummies of tiny pets in ancient Indian burials. Friends, write your comments what do you think about these breeds, do you agree or not that these breeds are meaner than large dogs? Also write what breed you have and support the video with likes. Well, that's all for today, thank you all for watching, if it was interesting, support the video with likes, thank you for subscribing, and take a look at what else we have prepared for you.